Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Majon S7 eyedropper. It was four years ago that Moonman introduced this little clear acrylic eyedropper called the M2. It was my first eyedropper and my first demonstrator too. I think it was the first time that I encountered the fountain pen technical term sloshing around. As the coolest thing about this pen was watching shimmering ink sloshing around in the barrel like a hypnotic lava lamp. His jiggling is almost hypnotic. Yes, it's like a lava lamp. Moonman made a number of eyedropper models in the subsequent years, like the C1 with the huge ink supply and a number six size nib, to the oddly fishtailed S5. And now we have this rather understated and more refined Majon S7. Let's take a look at it right now. <laughs> Natalia is really hard to keep up with both Majon and Jinhao these days. Huh? Um, it seems like every time I order a, a new Majon model or a new Jinhao model, they come up with another one. I've just ordered a Jinhao X850, which seems to be an update of the X750. And of course, they came out with the X159 recently. And Majon is coming up with new models almost every day. And this one has just arrived, and it's another new model from Majon, so let's open it up. So I got a box with this one. This is one of the new updated boxes from Majon, with their new name, of course, and a new design. It's very nice. Bubble pack on the inside, and a manual for how to fill Ah, and an eyedropper and a piston filler and so forth. So this pen is the Majon S7 eyedropper. Let's take it out here. Comes with an eyedropper and a condom for safe penning. And there's the S7. And it looks similar in color to a Pilot A23. Nice big solid clip. And a tapering section with a number five size. Moonman Super Quality F nib and plastic feed. And of course, it is an eyedropper and it actually feels very nice in the hand. So, the Majon S7 eyedropper. So, I'm going to show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, the pen is a regular cigar-shaped fountain pen that violates the copyrights on everything from the Pilot 74 to the Sailor 1911, not to mention the Mont Blanc 146. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were sued by Davidoff as well. And that might be why this pen seems to have been withdrawn from the market, as I can't seem to find it anywhere on eBay, Etsy, or AliExpress anymore. Get out! It's a very nice smoked amber turned acrylic resin, very similar to a Pilot 823 amber in color. From the top, we see the clear acrylic top finial, separated from the cap by a double grooved clip ring that holds the clip in place. The clip is a nicely shaped V-shaped taper with a V-shape at the top of the pen, accentuated by a bunch of dots in a V-shape as well. It's stiff, but usable. That's what she said. Excuse me? That's what she said. The cap shows how the inside of the acrylic is frosted, not the outside. I like this touch on this pen. I've always disliked how a clear demonstrator tends to detract from the overall elegance of the shape of the pen with the busy look of the internal components, somewhat like the Invisible Man plastic statues we used to have as kids. But this frosting here is the icing on the cake. See what I did there? <laughs> The end of the cap has a large two-step beveled cap band in gold metal that has Majon laser etched on the front. There's no appreciable step down to the barrel, which tapers down to another double grooved gold metal ring that separates the clear acrylic end finial from the frosted acrylic eyedropper barrel. The cap unscrews with two and one quarter turns to reveal the tapering acrylic section again with the inside frosted and a small flare towards the gold-colored number no. 5 size Moonman fine steel nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or replacement. The section is comfortable and that step and those threads 
are smooth. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It is the same nib you'll find on the Moonman M2. It has the old Moonman logo, Moonman super quality, and an F for fine engraved on it. The section unscrews to gain access to the ink chamber, the inside of the barrel, and the end of the section has a silicone O-ring to prevent leaking. And when you fill this pen with the eyedropper that is supplied, only fill it to the bottom of those threads or you'll have an Archimedes mess in your pants. I may not look it, but I'm the future of physics, so just move on. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into that acrylic that meets up with the section to seal the nib. I should mention that the cap is easily cross-threaded when recapping the pen. It actually just happened to me and it happened again happens seemingly all the time. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen nicely balanced in the hand. Unposted, the pen is just long enough for me to write with comfortably, but I prefer to write with this pen posted. I bought this pen on AliExpress for $18.99 US, and the pen was originally available in this smoked amber color and clear. I find it odd that it doesn't seem to be available anywhere at the moment. If anyone knows where it's for sale somewhere, please leave a comment below. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Majon S7 eyedropper with a Moonman M1 eyedropper, a Moonman C1 eyedropper, an Asvine V126 vacuum filler, and a Pen BBS 348 test model pump filler. The Pen BBS 348 was a prototype that was never reproduced after the first batch. It was kind of like a modern version of the classic Parker Vacuumatic filler. And you'll notice that I have another Asvine V126 in my possession after giving the one provided by Asvine for review away to a subscriber. I've actually got two now because I got the blue one replaced as well. They have the same kind of frosted turned acrylic as the Majon S7, but these are frosted on the outside instead. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The S7 and the V126 Asvine post very nicely indeed. The M2 goes on there, but it's not very sturdy and falls off quite frequently. And you'll also notice that the M2 here doesn't have that Moonman nib on it. I replaced it with a stub. And the rest of these pens are number six size steel nibs. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Of course, the C1 wasn't designed to post, and the S7 is a little bit shorter than the M2 unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Magon S7 eyedropper and it has a number five size steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet now, but when I first wrote with this pen, it was very, very dry indeed. You see the difference now to what it was before. This nib was drier than burnt toast. I did my unpatented Doug Seven Strokes to Inky Happiness technique on this nib, and I got it to write a little bit wetter. The nib has a lot of drag to it, what you might want to call feedback, but it was feedback bordering on unpleasant scratchiness. So I smoothed it a bit with some 12,000 grit micro mesh, and it's better, but it's still not a terrific nib. All my best Moonman pens, my M800 and M600Ss, I've replaced the nibs with either Leonardo or Kaigaloo long knife nibs. There's no flex or bounce in this nib at all. It is as uh, stiff as a nail. And the ink today is Pelican Smoky Quartz which I thought was a really nice match for this pen. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine 
or a Japanese. Fine. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It actually seems to be okay. It's a lot drier and a bit thinner. And for some quick writing. It doesn't seem to have much difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? The likes first. I like the overall look of this pen. I think it's very classy looking. I like the smoked amber with the gold trim and how the pen looks when it's full of ink. I like the fact that the acrylic is smoked on the inside. I like its capacity because it holds a ton of ink. And I like how it feels in the hand posted. But the nib is a serious drawback. It isn't pleasant to write with at all, even after as much tuning as I care do on it. The good news is these number five size nibs are abundantly available, but this model S7 is not. I'm at a loss to explain why the pen has disappeared from the market. And the potential for cross-threading this cap is also an issue. It's happened to me three or four times just while filming this review. Overall, this is a very interesting offering from Magion. Perhaps we'll see another similar to this and we might discover why this model seems to have vanished. If you have any clues, please add a comment below. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.